Okay, this is gonna be a review video on basic factoring. Um, gonna be working off these problems down on page 10 that we circled and to do for homework. So let's read the directions for the first group. It says factor using the greatest common factor or write prime. Now the ones I've selected are not prime so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so number one says, and I'm gonna work on this pink piece of paper because there's really not a lot of room to work. Set number one says x, you know what, can you see that? Not really, let's get a piece of white. Right, there we go. So number one says x cubed plus x squared. So the first thing I notice is that there are no coefficients here. It's just like one and one. So I don't need to worry about the greatest common factor in terms of the coefficients. So now I'm going to look at the exponents. This exponent is a three. This exponent is a two. I know that my greatest common factor is x squared because two is my smallest exponent. So I know my answer is gonna look like x squared and then with some parentheses. So to find out what goes in the parentheses, I'm gonna divide by x squared. When I divide, I subtract the powers. Three minus two is just x. And then anything divided by itself is just one. And that's number one. The next problem we've circled on our review sheet is number eight. We've got n squared plus two n. Now, the second term has a two, but the first term does not. Because of that, I can't take the two out because he doesn't have two. This is just like a one. And nothing divides into both one and two, but this is an n squared. His power is two. This is just an n. It's almost like he has a power of one because that is the lowest power that's what we can take out. And again, I'm just going to divide by n. Two minus, there's like a one here. Two minus one is one. N to the first. These n's cancel and we just have plus two. Now number 10, 18 n to the sixth minus 24 n to the fourth minus 12 n squared. Now this is a good one because we've got some coefficients to deal with. I've got 18, I've got 24, and I've got 12. And I wanna to think to myself, what is the biggest thing that divides into all three? Two divides into all three, but that's not the biggest thing. Four doesn't go into 18. Six goes into all three, 18, 24, and 12. So I'm gonna start my greatest common factor with a six. Then I'm going to look at the powers. I've got 2, 4, and 6. 2 is the smallest power. So I'm going to take out n squared. So here we go. 18 divided by 6 is 3. Oops, I don't know why I threw 6. Now, n to the 6 divided by n squared, I'm going to subtract 6 minus 2. Negative 24 divided by 6. That's a really weird looking 4. And now, n to the 4th divided by n squared, subtract the powers. Negative 12 divided by 6 is 2 and then these guys cancel off. And that's it. So that's factoring using the greatest common factor. Now number 13, the directions change. And they say, factor as the difference of two perfect squares or write prime. And again, I've made sure not to select any of their primes, so we don't have to worry about that. And you notice that the three I've selected, they've all got a subtraction symbol. So I need to just figure out what is being squared. So for number 13, if I don't know what's being squared, I can grab my little multiplication table and these bold numbers down the diagonal, diagonal, these are our perfect square numbers. And here's 100, that's 10 squared. And then 121 is 11 squared. So I know that number 13 is gonna factor to 10k plus 11, 10k minus 11. 
Number 16 has a 4 and an 81. And now here the x is over on the second term. So I'm just going to put the variable in the second term when I write my answer. So I'm going to look on my diagonal again if I need to. I see a 4 here, so I know that that's 2 times 2. And then 81. Can you close the door, please, Ms. Patel, when you come back in? That's okay. Go away. I'm still recording. I'm not pausing it. Okay, I'm actually still recording though, like it's still running. So I love you very much, but can we do this later? Yes. Thank you. I don't want to pause, so I don't have to like do the video, glue it together with Movie Maker. That's a pain in the butt. I will put it on your flash drive. Algebra 2, wave goodbye to Ms. Patel. Okay. okay, they waved goodbye. Can you close the door? Yes. Thank you. Sorry, guys. All right, so <laughs> I just didn't feel like dealing with Movie Maker. All right, so we've got 4 and we've got 81. 81 is going to be 9 times 9. So let's see, number 16 is going to be 2 minus 9x. 2 plus 9x. All right. Now, number 17, again, if you need to use that table, go ahead. 16 is what number squared? 4. We've got 4c, and then 49 is what number squared? Seven. There we go. All right. Our, fourth, our third group of problems says, factor these trinomials as the product of two binomials or write prime. Again, I have not selected any that are prime. So our first one, number 21, is a squared minus 8a minus 20. And if you want to make them x's, I am not going to be mad. And for this method, these trinomials, because they have one, two, three terms, I need to find two numbers that add and that multiply to negative 20. So I think about all the things that multiply to 20, I think about 2 times 20. And then I remember I'm trying to multiply to a negative 20. So one of them needs to be negative. So I'm going to sit here and just write them all down. And if I need to use my multiplication chart, I'm going to use my multiplication chart. Oops. Mm, I think that's it except for 1 and 20. Oh, well. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, if I need to, I'm going to grab my calculator and I'm just literally going to add these guys together and see which one has a, adds up to negative 8. And I have a mistake here and no one said anything. These should be 10s. Okay. Sorry about that. Miss Patel threw me off my game. All right, so here we go. Negative 2 plus 10 is positive 8. I need it to be a negative 8. 2 plus negative 10. Oh, there it is. That's the one. So now I know my answer is a plus 2, a minus 10. So let's look at the next one. Number 25. Number 25 is w squared minus 11w plus 30. So I need things that multiply to 30 and add to negative 11. So as soon as I notice this, I've noticed I'm trying to add to a negative and multiply to a positive. I know they both have to be negative. So when I do my list, like when I do like negative 1 times 30, they both have to be negative. Negative 2 times negative 15. Negative 3 times, oh, wait a minute, they, yeah, they both have to be negative. Negative three times negative 10. What else? I feel like there's one more. Oh yeah, five goes into 30, six times. So now I'm gonna grab my calculator and I'm gonna add all of these up. And this is the last time I'm gonna go through all the adding. So once I've got my list, I could do negative 12, I mean like that I'm gonna show you on the calculator. Nope. 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 
Oh wait, I typed that one wrong. Ding, 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 ding. So it's gonna be W minus five, W minus six. Bingo, all right, so that's 25. Now we've got 27, we're out of space. So number 27, If you've been following along and just writing the answers at this point, you should probably pause the video and try some of these on your own. We forgot 26. Okay, so I've got 27 and 26. Sorry, I'm doing them out of order. And I need things that multiply to 49, negative 49, and add to negative 4. So I'm going to go... 49, I don't think it's 1, or 45, I don't think it's 1 and 45, it's probably 9 and 5. So the question is, is it negative 9 and positive 5, or positive 5, positive 9 and negative 5? So why don't you grab, pause, grab your calculator, and add them up, see which pair it is. If you got negative 9 and 5, you are correct. So that makes it r minus 9, r plus 5. 24's got lots of stuff. So what multiplies to negative 24? So it could be negative, it's probably not 1 and 24, so I'm not going to do that one. Negative 2 times 12, 2 times negative 12, or it could be 3 times, or negative 3 times 8, 3 times negative 8, 4 times negative 6, I think that's all. So pause the video and see which pair adds up to positive 5. If you picked negative 3 and 8, you are correct. So the answer is going to be C minus 3, C plus 8. And again, you could also switch that. It could be C plus 8. Okay. So we've got two more in this group, 29 and 30. 29 is A squared minus 8A plus 15. And then 30 is e to the third plus 14e plus 24. Okay, so number 29, I know I've got to have two negative numbers because I'm adding to a, a negative, but I'm multiplying to a positive. What do you think it is? If you said negative 3 and negative 5, you're correct. So for number 30, I can kind of recycle my list from 26, but now I'm trying to multiply to a positive number. So I'm just gonna take my list and like get rid of all the negatives. And now I'm gonna to think to myself, okay, which off this list adds to positive 14? Two and 12. So it's gonna be E plus two, E plus 12. Okay. Now, the last set of problems says, factor using any method, none are prime. So, let's write them down. Number 31 says, k squared minus 6k minus 40. Number 33, h squared plus 7. Okay, so I have three methods of factoring. I have greatest common factor, I have difference of two squares, and then I have uh, trinomials. So when I look at this, I immediately notice that I have no common factor. They all do not contain a K, so I can't take out a K. I can take a two out of the first two, but this guy doesn't have a two in the front, so I can't take out a common factor. Because there are three terms, one, two, three, I can come up with what adds and multiplies. And because we're trying to multiply to negative 40, we're going to make a long list. It's not going to be 1 and 40, so I'm not going to do that. Those are too far apart. So I'm going to go 2 times 20. Oh, negative. And so 2. So go ahead and make your list. Uh, 3 does not go into 40. 4 goes into 40 10 times. And one could be positive, doesn't matter, one needs to be negative. And now again, if you need to grab your multiplication table, look, where are all the 40s? Five and eight, 
So it could be negative 5 and positive 8, or it could be positive 8, and, or positive 5 and negative 8. I think that's it. I don't, 6 and 7 don't go in. So what I want you to do, pause the video. If you haven't figured out, figure out which of this, what off this list adds to negative 6. There it is. So it's going to be k plus 4, k minus 10. All right. Again, 33, I'm going to look to see if they have a common factor. I have an H here, I have an H here, no H. I have a 1 here, a 7 here, and a 30 here. Nothing in common, so no common factor. I have 1, 2, 3 terms. So I need to figure out what adds to 7 and multiplies to negative 30. And because it's negative 30, again, I know it's going to be one number positive, one number negative. So let's think. It's not 30 and 1. That's 2. I'll tell you what. Why don't you just think about it? If you said the two numbers are 3 and 10 and the 3 needs to be negative, you are correct. All right, and then the last one in our review. <coughs> Thank you is uh, 38, and that one's n squared minus 64. No common factor, nothing goes in evenly to both of them, because this guy has only just n squared, this is 64. But how many terms are here? One, two, and what's in the middle of them? A minus sign. So I need to find out what number times itself gives me 64. And again, if I need to, I can examine my multiplication table, Look down the diagonal, there's 64. It's 8 squared. So this is going to be n plus 8 and n minus 8. And that concludes our basic factoring review.